We're here at the uh, Paris Air Show with, uh, with Kieran Rao of, uh, of Airbus. Uh, thank you for being with us this afternoon. My pleasure. We'd like to ask uh, about the, uh, the narrow body, the midsize, and the, and the very large aircraft markets. Well, let's, st let's start at the bottom with the, uh, the smaller aircraft. Yep. There's been a lot of discussion about the middle of the market aircraft, and we've heard a lot from your major competitor uh -huh. uh, regarding that. Uh, how are you positioning the A321LR, and uh, how is that uh, the solution that Airbus feels uh, is right for that market today? So to start with, let me say I'm very encouraged with the, with, the, with the noises that Boeing has been making. And I'm encouraged because we have the right aeroplane, and they're worried. I mean, they're genuinely worried. Because when you look at the um, A321, whether it be the 321 uh, regular passenger aeroplane or the 321 long range, uh, there's no aircraft of that size category that can beat it. The 321 has achieved a status now where uh, the 737-9 MAX simply can't uh, uh, match its performance. It can't match it on range, it can't match it on capacity, it can't match it on economics, and for sure it can't match it on uh, comfort. So we put all those things together, the, three, the 321 today is truly the market leader. We're increasing the production of the A321 to the point where almost 50% of our production of the single aisle aircraft will be A321s. If we go back five years, it was only about 10%. So as the market has evolved, as we've evolved the product itself, we have, we've moved the, uh, the doors of the aircraft around, so that we can increase the seat capacity from 220 right up to 240. It doesn't just apply for the low cost configuration, it also applies for the dual class configurations. With the new door configurations that we have on the A321, we're able to accommodate, with the same fuselage, we're able to accommodate at least 10 or 12 more passengers uh, than we were in the past. Plus the new long range version, plus the uh, improvements with the new, plus the improvements with the uh, engine advantages that, that Pratt is going to offer us in the coming years. All of that makes the aircraft unbeatable uh, by the 737-9. If we look at the higher end of that market, it's the A330neo. So the 330CO as we have today is very successful. We saw this week that Saudi ordered a lot of aircraft. We'll see in the coming months of, uh, many more uh, 330, especially on the regional market, uh, uh, being sold. That'll then evolve into the 330neo and the 330neo is an aircraft that's the same size as the 787-8 in terms of capacity. It has the same range as the 787-8, burns the same fuel as the 787-8. It offers a more comfortable seat than the 787-8, but much more importantly, it offers a much better direct operating cost than the 787-8. So Airbus, on that middle of the market, today offers the 330-800neo or the A321 long range or the current uh, version of the A321. Put those both aeroplanes together, we basically lock Boeing out of the middle of the market. So why am I encouraged? I'm encouraged because Boeing is panicking and that's the sort of noises that they're making that they're going to, well, we'll produce a new aeroplane because the ones they have simply can't do the job. One of the arguments they've had in the narrow body market for a number of years now is that their residual values are higher because they had passenger to freight options at the end of life for their aircraft. Yeah. Today you announced an A320 and A321 uh, package to freight initiative. Uh -huh. uh, how do you think that will impact the, uh, the, market, the market for your airplanes as well as the uh, residual values for existing A320 family customers? Well, the A321 has been crying out to become a, a freighter aircraft. A321 offers the right capacity, the A321 has the right range, it has the right uh, size in terms of uh, its, its cross-section. All those things put together, the A321 will make a very good freighter. So will the A320, but we'll probably sell more 321s than we will sell A320s as freighters. So now, um, we, we have tried in the past, and we had a project which, which we almost launched an A320 uh, family freighter a few years ago. Unfortunately, that didn't work out, but we didn't give up. The market is very strong. We'll sell more than 600 of these aircraft as time goes by. So the argument on residual value, I think, is is there, but it's not that it's not as strong as maybe uh, Boeing would like to make out. The market is about 600 airplanes. We've already delivered over 6,000 airplanes. So one tenth of the airplanes will end up as freighters. So it's not it's not that bigger impact that that uh, that, it, that it suggests when you when you say that. But but still, it'll be an important. It will make an important contribution to the residual values. But what we see today, it, it was only a few years ago when we launched the A330. Do you mind if I just visit plumbing very briefly, would you? Uh, that's very kind of them. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, uh, when, when we launched the A330, A320neo, we all thought that we would see the end of the A320CO 
but that actually didn't happen. What we've seen today is that the A320CO continues to sell very well. We sold hundreds of A320COs in 2014, we'll, we will sell more this year. We have no issue of transitioning from the CO to the NEO. And in fact, today we have many airlines asking for the A320CO. So the residual value of COs, especially when we have the chocolate introduced on the airplane, when we can retrofit chocolates on the aircraft, we put all of that together and we have a very strong airplane when we, uh, with the A320CO as it is today. Uh, the increase in capacity also applies to the 320CO as it, as it has with the A321 uh, and the A320neos uh, because what we've done is we've recertified the door positions on the, on the 320 family. That gives us an exit limit increase so we can introduce new uh, uh, lab and galley uh, positions on the aircraft. That allows us to increase the capacity up to 189 seats on the 320. That's not just the NEO. We can, we already have CEOs in service with 186 seats. On the A321, we can go from 220 right up to 230 with the CEO, and, it, and we can go from 230 to 240 seats with the NEO. So we, we don't just put our innovation into the into new products, we put the innovation into the airplanes that are in service. So when we put that together, what happens is we keep the residual value of the A320 family going and going very strong. That's great. Move, moving up in the market, if we talk about the A330 and A350 positioning in the market, uh, how are you positioning vis-a-vis -vis your competitor there, and what can we expect uh, for, the, for the A350 market? So the A350, uh, we have the 350-900 and we have the A350-1000. The A350-900, let's be frank, is unbeatable when it comes to what Boeing has to offer. Boeing offers the 787-87, not really against the 350, they offer that against the 330 Neo. They offer the 787-9 uh, against the A350-900. But just looking at those two airplanes side by side, the 350-900 has, has more range, it has more capacity, which is most important. When we sell our aircraft in the marketplace today, what airlines are crying out for is the additional seats on the aircraft. So if we look at the A350-900, it offers about 30 to 40 more seats compared to the 787-9, but it does so with more comfort because we have an 18-inch seat, they have a 17-inch seat. Uh, we have a wider cross-section, so our business and first-class products also have, a, has a, have more comfort in them. Uh, if you are, hopefully you've had a chance to go and look around the A350. Everyone I've taken around the aircraft, the first reaction is, wow, what a beautiful airplane it is. So we have, we have the comfort, we have the economics, we have the range, we have the capacity. So what did Boeing do? Well, they launched the 787-10 to try and keep up with us. Uh, the 787-10, yes, good economics, but no range. So, uh, and they still have lousy comfort when it comes to seats. And their engines really are pushing it to the limit because the 787-10 engine was originally designed at 68 to 72,000 pound range. They now pushed it to 75 for the 787-10. They've got a 77, 78,000 pounds. And that's really pushing the engine to the limit. So the maintenance cost of those engines will be sky high. The, um, the airframe, uh, doesn't allow them to take the, the range, so that more, more than a thousand miles less range than, than the A350-900. And we have about the same seat capacity. So when you look at the 787-10 against A3, good effort, but not good enough. I'd give it six out of 10 in terms of trying to catch us up. Because there's, you know, when people buy aircraft, they don't buy it to 85% of the route network and say, well, sorry guys, we'll stop flying the other 15%. They don't fly to say, well, we'll get you almost to Los Angeles, but you'll have to walk the last 100 miles. You know, when, when airlines go out to buy aircraft, they buy aircraft that have flexibility and have range capability, neither of which the 787-10 offers. Okay. How about the A380 market? The, uh, the very large aircraft continues to evolve. We heard Steve Hazy yesterday talk about a potential stretch. Yeah. We've heard uh, Tim Clark talk about the need for a NEO. Uh, what are you doing with the A380? And with all of these things going on in the background, how do you, how do you sell uh, the existing A380 in today's market? So A380 is, 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 is a beautiful aeroplane. I mean, again, if you've had the chance to go on, on board our demo, uh, the Qatar aircraft out here, you know, all the passengers, again, they just love flying on A380s. So when we've introduced uh, the aircraft to the airlines, when it goes with British Airways, when it's gone with, with Emirates, of course, in large numbers, when it goes with the Asian carriers, such as Singapore or Thai and Malaysia, uh, from a passenger point of view, the airlines love it. Uh, the, sorry, the passengers love it. When it comes to flying the aircraft in terms of the economics, the aircraft can do missions and without any limitations. It can do it at the lowest in terms of seat mount cost. The issue with the A380 is we launched the aircraft 
entered in service 2007. We had the economic crisis in 2008. We went through airlines then feeling that they needed to downsize. So we had an aircraft that launched probably, unfortunately, in, in, at, at, the, at a very difficult time in, in terms of the world and, and, and economics. So airlines became very uh, conservative. And yes, if you fly an A380, yes, you can fill the A380 and the airlines see it every day. And if you fill it, they can make a lot of money. If you don't fill it, of course, you don't make money. So, so the A380 in, inherently has very good characteristics, but it just had uh, poor timing in terms of the world economy. Now, traffic continues to grow, growing at 5% a year. It doubles every 15 years. So 2007, we introduced it. Now we're going to get in 2017, that's 10 years. By the time we get the end second, we 15 years. Then with 15 years, we've, the amount of passengers have doubled. The ability to fill the aircraft becomes much more certain. Airlines are now, who were reluctant in the past to look at an A380, and now start to say yes. The economy is good. The passenger growth is good. We know that the passengers love it. We know we can make money when, when we can fill it. We know it can go everywhere. So now we start to see uh, a new interest in, in the A380. Will it need an engine change? Will it need an upgrade as we move into the next decade? Sometime in the next decade? Yes, it probably will. Most aeroplanes do. And so uh, looking at the A380, it probably will need, uh, and we're working on some ideas at the moment. We work with Emirates, we work with some of our other customers. We say, what, what do you want going into the 2020s? Yes, more fuel efficiency. Yes, more capacity. Should it be a four frame stretch? stretch? Should it be a six frame st stretch? All these ideas we're, we're, we're looking at and we're working on. Um, what we will conclude, whether it be at the end of this year or early next year, we will conclude um, that, I mean, when we launched the A380, we knew that this is an airframe that's going to last 40 years. Can it last with the same engine and same technology? No, well, no other aircraft has, because as aircraft evolved, 350-1000 is a very powerful machine when it comes to economics. A380 has to not just uh, be equal to the 350-1000, has to beat it. It'll therefore beat the 777-9X. So we have a great aeroplane, uh, or the, the basics of a great aircraft, which will sell in, in this decade, and in the next decade, we'll see what we have to do. And stretching is, is a good possibility. Thank you very much, Karen. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you.